with families spending more time at home than ever before. Furnishing home offices and upgrading kitchens has become a top priority for stay-at-home shoppers. That has been great news for Williams-Sonoma. The 65-year-old retailer sells home goods, high-end cookware, and furniture through its seven brands, including Pottery Barn, Williams-Sonoma, and West Elm. Thanks to a strong e-commerce business and demand for all things home-related, the company has seen net revenue jump 22% and e-commerce revenue surge 49% in the third quarter of 2020. On March 27, 2021, the stock hit an all-time high closing price of $147, up 467% from its March 2020 low. There's a lot of secular trends that are highly supportive of our business right now, from the interest in the home, to the interest in cooking, to the e-commerce acceleration, you know, the fragmented market, and focus on sustainability. But according to analysts, the company known for its high-quality products faces potential headwinds as home furnishing sales shift even further online and rivals like online furniture retailer Wayfair increase their market share. Again, the controversy around Williams-Sonoma is they're not Amazon, they're not Wayfair, they're not restoration hardware, all of which are um, in some ways more exciting companies. Uh, Williams-Sonoma is a very exciting company. They're doing a lot of fantastic things that are much better than traditional brick and mortar retailers. Um, but there are other competitors out there that uh, seem to get investors a bit more fired up, I would say. So the big questions that we're getting from investors these days are how long can the top line strength uh, persist? Can the company meet all the demand that it's seeing? Uh, so that's an area that we didn't discuss. And then uh, what does the margin profile of this company look like in a couple of years as more and more sales shift online? So can William Sonoma maintain its momentum? And what happens to the brand's brick and mortar locations during the remainder of the pandemic? William Sonoma got its start in 1956. Following a trip to Europe, Chuck Williams, a former airplane mechanic and carpenter with a passion for cooking, came up with the idea for importing high quality French cookware to America. Out of a former hardware store in Sonoma, California, William Sonoma was born. From the late 1950s to early 1970s, Williams introduced American kitchens to culinary favorites like cast iron pots from Le Creuset, cutlery from Wusthof, and cookware from All Clad. But it was the 1972 launch of a catalog for cooks that was an inflection point for the company, launching its direct-to-consumer business. The first Williams Sonoma catalog had a circulation of about 10,000. By the late 1970s, Americans' attitude towards food was shifting too. Healthier diets, the availability of ethnic dishes, and the popularity of appliances like food processors were on the rise. Sensing an opportunity, Oklahoma entrepreneur Howard Lester bought the small retailer in 1978 and is credited with transforming it into a home furnishing giant. As of January 21st, 2021, the company had a market cap of almost $10 billion. The catalog business, uh, enabled Howard Lester and his team over the years uh, to test out new brands and to figure out uh, what the receptiveness would be like in different towns before he would go in and open up a store. There was a period of time where I think being a, a catalog retailer uh, was perhaps viewed as a bit of a uh, of being a dinosaur, uh, but it, it, it has proven to pivot well into their e-commerce business today. In 1983, William Sonoma went public. At the time, the company was making its first foray out of the kitchen, buying a gardening catalog business and building its existing mail order business. The brand took an even bigger leap in 1986, buying Pottery Barn and launching the Pottery Barn catalog. In the mid 90s, both William Sonoma and Pottery Barn were getting bigger and the product selection wider. In an effort to reach a new online audience, William Sonoma launched its e-commerce site in 1999. By the late 90s and early 2000s, Williams Sonoma was expanding again with a variety of new brands and catalogs, including Pottery Barn Kids, Pottery Barn Teen, and furniture retailer West Elm. And in 2010, Laura Albert took over as CEO. You know, I've been with the company 24 years, and when I walked in the door, we were 40% catalog at the time. And so because of that catalog her heritage, when the internet came along, it was very easy for us to make that transition because we had the ability to ship directly to a customer, and we also had a wonderful house file, knew how to market one-on-one, -on -one, which is really different than marketing in a mass way. As of February 2020, William Sonoma had 614 stores in the US, Canada, Australia, and the UK, 
and it had 129 franchise stores abroad. Net revenue for 2019 was $5.9 billion, up 11% from 2017. The home goods market in the U.S. is a $300 billion industry. According to an IBIS World Industry Report, in March 2020, the biggest brick-and-mortar home furnishing stores in the U.S. were Bed Bath & Beyond, Home Goods, Williams Sonoma, RH, Crate and & Barrel, and Pier 1 Imports. The remaining 39% of the market are a mix of small to medium-sized companies. COVID-19 and social distancing have had a big impact on the brick-and-mortar home good retailers. In February 2020, Pier 1 filed for bankruptcy and announced in May it was winding down its business due in part to the coronavirus pandemic. The company re-emerged in late 2020 as an online seller. But while retailers initially saw home furnishing sales plummet, companies that have their digital marketplace in order have benefited from consumers stuck at home upgrading kitchens and redecorating living rooms. And suddenly we're at home, we're at home with our kids, we're working from home, we're doing all these things and we're cooking from home because we're afraid of taking out or going to get meals. And we realized that Americans realized that our homes are not equipped for what we're having to do. Big picture wise, if you think about the consumer's discretionary income, they spend a fair amount of money on travel and entertainment and restaurants historically. We're seeing spending levels on those categories decline by about 50%. And uh, those categories are more than four times the size of the home furnishings and home improvement category, really. So it doesn't take much spending shift from those categories to home furnishings and furniture to really move the needle. So that's really a boom for the category. IKEA, the Swedish furniture maker, said online sales increased 45% from September 2019 to August 2020. In January 2021, Bed Bath & Beyond reported its same-store sales increase for the second consecutive quarter in a row, due in part to digital sales surging 77%. In the three months ended October 31, 2020, Target saw revenue in its home furnishings and decor category increase more than 27% from the year prior. And in August 2020, online furniture store Wayfair posted a profit for its second consecutive quarter since going public six years earlier. But Williams Sonoma may have benefited the most. With an already strong digital presence in November 2020, Williams Sonoma announced third quarter revenue rose 22% to $1.7 billion, driven in part by a jump in e commerce revenue. We are one of the only retailers who did not furlough anyone during the pandemic. We kept everyone doing something or just paying them. And this has really been um, something that has paid off now a lot because the people that we had working for us are so well trained. And with more people shopping online, Williams Sonoma digital sales climbed 49% in the third quarter of 2020 and accounted for 70% of all revenue. Williams Sonoma is very well positioned because of its products. First, it's Williams Sonoma brand being focused on the kitchen and housewares. Um, was extremely well positioned early on because that's what people were shopping for, how to do things in the kitchen, cook more at home, bake, etc. And then secondly, there are other brands, including West Elm and Pottery Barn, are where the consumer is really shopping for home goods now. Uh, they want furniture, they're redoing their rooms to make them more comfortable, to work at home, to play at home, to exercise at home. With its mix of retail stores and a savvy digital presence, Williams Sonoma has seen positive same store sales growth in the 15 quarters from April 2017 through October 2020. I don't really buy into the theory of the retail apocalypse. Uh, you know, even pre COVID, this was more a story of uh, finally the culling of the week, making room for those who are more capable or up to date to blossom. And I think even before COVID, uh, William Sonoma and their set of businesses, I think has been benefiting from that culling. William Sonoma had net revenue of $5.9 billion in 2019. Home furnishings brand Pottery Barn made up almost 38% of the company's net revenue at $2.2 billion. Furniture retailer West Elm had net revenue of $1.4 billion in 2019, making up 25% of the company's net sales. Specialty kitchen retailer William Sonoma made up 18% of revenue. Pottery Barn Kids and Teen accounted for 15% of sales, and the remainder came from lighting store Rejuvenation and online gift buying site Mark and Graham. 
According to analysts, two areas where Williams-Sonoma excels is by having a deep understanding of their core customer and meeting that consumer where he or she wants to shop. Of course, the key here beyond their merchandising, it's their ability to meet the customer where the customer wants to shop. The company has also invested heavily in tech. In 2017, Williams-Sonoma acquired Outward, a 3D imaging company that allows consumers to visualize how high-priced furniture will look inside of their homes before purchasing. Based in San Francisco, the company has benefited from its close proximity to Silicon Valley. So what does that e-commerce business mean for the future of Williams-Sonoma's brick and mortar stores? Consumers looking to purchase mid to high-end furniture often go to stores to experience the product firsthand. Retail locations also have the ability to provide easy access for online order pickups. As of 2019, retail store revenue accounted for about 44% of net revenue. Our stores are a competitive advantage to our digital first model. It's not minus stores, it's plus stores. And they play an important role in differentiating our offerings to the customer. They're experiential, they offer customers the convenience of also omni-channel services, which you can't not remember. You have to remember that if you don't have stores, you can't do those things like buy online, pick up the store, buy online, ship to store, and use stores as many DCs. And we are going to continue to invest in our stores. However, during a first quarter earnings call in May 2020, Williams-Sonoma CEO Albert said the company is expecting to close about 60 of its more than 600 stores. According to analysts, fewer stores will allow the company to save on things like rent and labor and allow some of those sales to shift to online. I think that Williams-Sonoma, looking out over the next three to five years, they're probably going to get pretty selective about which stores they decide to keep and get even more aggressive at pruning back their real estate. Uh, which could improve costs and improve margins um, and of course you know benefit shareholders if they do it successfully we're going to have fewer but better stores at the same time we have you know over the next three years 50 percent of our leases coming up for renewal this is in a very very strong position and we've raised the bar on profitability and we're going to keep the stores that are relevant in great centers and where the deals make sense According to analysts, store closures, investments in e-commerce and tech, and Williams-Sonoma's ability to attract and retain customers could leave the company in a much better position than its competitors coming out of the pandemic.